Um, the Page of Swords, I, I just, I, some, these birds are so cool looking with like the, <laughs> with the devil horns and the yellow faces and uh, I, I just think they look rad. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 7 of Deck Creator Corner. Today I am joined by Brendan Marnell of the Pacific Northwest Tarot. Hey, Brendan. Hey. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, that seems to be working better. Cool. I don't know what what happened there, but yeah, we're we're back on. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry about that, everybody. Um, we had been chatting for a little bit already, um, but just to kind of get back on the page because um, I post these videos on YouTube. Um, Brendan, if you could just do a quick intro, um, your name, your pronouns, uh, where you are, and just a little bit about the tarot deck and uh, how you were inspired to start this. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm Brendan Marnell. Um, my pronouns are he, him, um, and I'm here in Portland, Oregon. Um, and a little bit about the, the inspiration of the deck, I, this is, I, I I guess repeat for some of the people who were on before before we had to drop, but um, you know at the at the start of the pandemic, I was really looking for uh, for an art project, something to to do to feel productive and like I was working on myself or improving myself in some way as we all went into lockdown and thinking about the um, you know fe feeling like a hermit, feeling like a bear going into hibernation, and I, I put those two ideas together, and, and that that was the first card I drew was a was a black bear, um, as as the hermit, and then you know just kind of very much as a personal project, not not thinking I would ever publish this or put put this out anywhere. I, I just kind of kept drawing cards, and um, you know my my goals were really to to improve as an artist, to, to learn more about um, the, the Pacific Northwest, the, the part of the world where I live, um, and, to, and to, you know, spend, spend some time thinking about each of the tarot archetypes and, and learning the tarot better. And it, it just really grew from there and found an audience. And yeah, it's, it's been, a, been a very uh, exciting and interesting project over the last year. Yeah, and it's been really awesome. And we talked a little bit about this before the live cut off, but um, just about how um, so many people resonate with these animal themed decks. And I think a big part of that is because we like to see the archetypes reflected outside of the human experience. And we can see it in other animals and other beings and other cycles. Um, like for example, in your deck, I really, I like that it is an animal themed deck, but not every card has an animal in it. Like the wheel of fortune is just like a swirl of energy. Um, and it kind of just like, is like a primal archetype. And I really yeah, like that. So the, um, so, so the wheel of fortune, it's, a, it's actually a snail shell. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. But these, these Let snails, me look there. yeah, they have, um, it's, it's called a black turban snail. Um, and they, I, I don't know if it's parts of the shell wearing away, um, but it gets the, this very shiny gold and oh. silver finish, um, but behind the black, but yeah, it, it does read like an energy, energy swirl. Um, it totally, I totally, um, yeah. totally thought it was an energy swirl, but now that you're seeing it, I totally see the snail. Yeah. Yeah. You can see some, some little like snail yeah reachers in the front there um on the on the bottom but i mean there are cards that don't have animals there's um there's se several plant cards there's one one fungus card um but yeah the majority of them are animals yeah true like the world here right rose mm -hmm. yep so yeah i like the the reflection of the different types of archetypes um that you can see in these animal based decks um we talked a little bit about why this deck is important, and I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into that um, now to, to ask a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned before that the creation of this deck was um, um, an emotional experience because as you were depicting the animals, their habitats were being destroyed by the wildfires and stuff. And um, I want to know if you can kind of let us in, like, uh, let us into that window a little bit and how that experience was for you to create this deck while also 
kind of seeing the actual wildlife suffering. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was it was definitely emotional. And I, I think that first that idea first entered the deck with the tower, which was maybe the seventh or eighth card that I drew. Um, and, you know, I drew that thinking about the wildfires a few years ago when a lot of the Columbia Gorge burned. Um, and, and then a few months later, we had even worse wildfires all across the West. Um, and yeah, I, I think for me, it was just, um, a, a very emotional experience drawing, drawing these animals, knowing, knowing that their habitats were burning, knowing that the smoke that I, w I was inhaling into my lungs and trying to keep out of the house was, was like literally their, their habitats, literally the trees and, and plants and, and animals that make up our our forests um so yeah i mean that that was the turning point for for the deck where um you know i i really wanted to have it be bigger than myself and um and do some good in the world so i i mentioned this before we we cut off um but you know the the deck's done really well on kickstarter which has been which has been awesome you know way beyond any expectation i, I could possibly have had and um i i want to i want to give a, a, a good amount of that money back to organizations that are protecting the, the habitats here and, and taking care of, of the planet and, and of the Northwest. So um, I'll, I, I'll have more details about that. I'll share it on my Instagram. I'll share it in my backer updates as, as soon as I have more, more details on exactly which organizations I'm choosing. I'm, I'm doing research right now. Um, but yeah, and if anyone has suggestions of, of organizations that are that are doing that, that share that mission, I I would love to hear them. Um, and I, and I saw a question about um, the aces being plants. Yeah, the aces are all flowers. Um, and you mentioned the hydrangea for for cups. And um, yeah, that's that's one of my favorites because my uh, my daughter actually suggested that she's uh, mm. she's six. I think she was five at at the time. Um, but that's so sweet. Yeah, we, we were just walking around our neighborhood. Oh, it's the uh, the Ace of Cups. The, oh, the, Ace um, of Cups. Yeah. And there's there's hydrangeas all over our neighborhood. These, um, you know, th just these very vibrant blue, it feels like a burst of blue energy as you're as you're walking past mm. it. And um, I, I, hydrangea, I forget exactly what it means. But it, it like the Greek root of the word has something to do with cups. And when, when I, uh, my, my daughter and I learned that from a, from a little like field guide that we were using in our neighborhood. Um, and she was like, Oh, you should do that for your, for your ace of cups. And I was like, that is a really good idea. Cause she, she knew I was doing flowers for the aces. Mm, that's so sweet. I love how, like, see, like, that's why I love doing these interviews because like you get all these little, these little hidden details of how the cards came about. And I think that's so awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad to hear about the your focus on wanting to give back to the wildlife and conservation and sustainability. Because um, for me, um, I'm, you know, I study permaculture and regenerative agriculture and stuff. And um, it's part of the work that I do here in Puerto Rico is helping farmers learn about how to do things regeneratively and sustainably. And um, in my opinion, a lot of the decks nowadays don't really focus on trying to be sustainable or trying to give back to the wildlife or anything like that. And so with my deck, I'm really wanting to kind of incorporate that sustainability aspect. And so it was really awesome to see that you were like up front being like, and I think we even said that Kickstarter um, didn't even approve it the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I mentioned that in an Instagram post. So so my, the first time I submit the kick, you, you have to ki submit a Kickstarter for approval before it can launch. Um, and it has to meet all of their rules. Um, and I had a more specific plan about you know, how, how much money I was going to donate and, um, you know, what, what percentage of each sale, that, that kind of thing. And they actually rejected my project um, because I guess you're not allowed to do charity fundraisers on Kickstarter. Their uh... Kickstarter is meant to be for raising funds for the project itself, um, which makes no, makes no sense to me. I have seen other decks out there that say I'll donate 10% of each um each sale to a specific cause or um there's a deck out there right now called the literary tarot which is 
literally a um, a fundraiser, but but maybe it's different because they're an actual nonprofit organization. Um, yeah, that's that's doing it. So that that might be why they're exempt from that. But but yeah, so I took I took out any specifics that were in the Kickstarter. So I'm mm. kind of being intentionally vague until the Kickstarter's over. But you know, that's that's the plan is to give back in some way. That makes sense. See, because yeah. like, and so it's see, it's really it is kind of bizarre, isn't it? Because I have seen some Kickstarters where they're saying like, oh, I'll give like on the gentle tarot, she was like ten percent to ocean yeah. conservation and stuff like that. Um, and so I was wondering about your experience because you said that they denied you so i was like i mean what could they have possibly done like yeah, why I, <laughs> I don't know i don't know um, um but yeah so i thought i think that's just really cool that um at least you were able to find a way to you know go forward with the crowdfunding and still find that space to kind of give back and just make it a little bit more mysterious <laughs> yeah yeah right i i you know, at, at the end of the day, after the project has succeeded, if, if I've earned money from it, they, you know, they can't stop me from donating it. Like, that'd be ridiculous. Right. So exactly. I, I think just as long as it's not the the explicit mission of the project, I, I think I'm okay. Yeah, exactly. And so I think all of this is just to say for those watching this video, if you want to create a tarot deck, I totally support you in that. But I do think that there needs to be an aspect of trying to find ways to give back to the environment and finding ways to uplift sustainability because we are exploiting the environment to print these decks for us and to you know mass produce them on this level and so i think it's just really important to kind of at least consider you know like mm -hmm. um and and add it into your plan of action how how is this deck helping not just people on a spiritual level but how is this helping people and animals on a physical level too um so yeah um I want to move on to uh, the next few questions, Brendan. I have some yeah. questions here about like the art and the process a little bit. Um, so I'm curious what art medium you used um, and um, how much your graphic design background influenced like how you approached uh, the deck, like making it. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it's it's all digital, but hand hand drawn. Um, so I'm. I'm using an app called Procreate on iPad um, and just and drawing with an Apple Pencil. Um, yep. So yeah, that's the medium. And in terms of design influencing it, um, I think I think design influences me a lot as an artist. Like I'm I'm not the best drawer out there. Like my my drawing skills are they're fine. You know they're getting yeah. better. Right growth mm -hmm. mindset. They're improving. Um, but but I think I think where I where I shine is with composition and mm. layout and you know thinking about the different elements of the card and and how they tie in together um, and the the design really informs that um, mm -hmm. and you know color is is a big part of that as well. Um, yeah, all the colors are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I also I also hand lettered them. Um, I'm I'm a bit of a typography nerd, um, so. You know, I'm I'm sure I could have found a font that would have looked perfectly fine on on the cards, but um, you know, I I had fun drawing all the letters and numbers by by hand and coming up with a with a style. Um, that, That's really awesome, yeah. Brandon. Yeah, I didn't know so. that. That's really cool. That must have taken a lot of extra work too. Yeah, or, or, it, was, or, it was probably an hour an hour extra time for each card on average you know i mean a lot of them just have a number so for right yeah exactly so, so that's not too bad yeah exactly yeah. um that's really awesome yeah i'm planning on uh using procreate or oh cool my brother's the i'm gonna get my brother to illustrate the deck for me um and because he's an artist and he does stippling art and stuff um and wood burning and pyrography and all that stuff so um so he's going to use Procreate for kind of like the first time because he doesn't, he hasn't really done a lot of digital art. Mm -hmm. So, but he's going to try to do uh, stippling on Procreate to do the, the, the whole deck digitally. Yeah, um, I, I feel like once you, once you get used to the interface, it's not that different than drawing, you know, with physical media. Right, and that's what he said that he liked about Procreate is that while as he was using it, he's like this, it, like as the more comfortable I get with it, I just feel like I'm drawing. Yeah. 
You know, like, I just feel like I'm drawing on steroids. Like, I have all these other options that I could do, like, um, but it doesn't feel as, like, esoteric or, like, as intense as, like, Photoshop or something, you know, where it's, Yeah, like, yeah. Photoshop has so many features to do so many different things, and only 10% of them have anything to do with digital <laughs> art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, kudos to those people, like, Carrie, for example, for the Meraki, she used Photoshop. And it just blows my mind that she has like that, the capability to use Photoshop to that degree and everything to come out because I considered Photoshop and my brother did too, but it was like months of like having to just learn how to use it before oh, even. Yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, I, I've been using it for 20 years. So it, you know, to, to me, it's like riding a bike, but right. the, 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 big, uh, the big advantage of Procreate is you can, draw on the couch instead of drawing at your desk so, oh true um, yeah so I'm, I'm a big fan of the ipad for that reason <laughs> yeah you can yeah you can be anywhere that's true yeah. i didn't think of that but yeah you can really just like pull it out anywhere and just start working on the deck and stuff that's yeah, really yeah. awesome pre-pandemic -pre i would take it with me you know before i was working on the deck for other art projects i would just have it in my backpack and work mm. in a coffee shop or you know um waiting 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 in line for something you you can just take yeah exactly for 10 minutes exactly um okay so my next question um we touched on this a little bit but how how closely um like how closely did you follow the writer wade smith like how how many how many creative liberties did you give yourself um i think you changed maybe a couple of the names but yeah just uh, how yeah. do you feel about just in general the white wade smith system and this deck yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I would say it references the Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, it, it you know it definitely has some inspiration from the Rider Waite Smith deck, but it's it's not it's not intended to be a a reinterpretation of it or, or a redrawing of it or anything like that. So there's there's um, you know like the the um, where's a good example. Like some some of the um, placement of the like here the three of the three of swords with the with the three swords like stabbing into the number it's like that's a a, a pretty clear reference to the Rider Waite Smith deck with the heart um, right but you know th those those little cues are just kind of meant as as like winks or nods or if you know the Rider Waite Smith deck it'll help you connect to that card if you don't you're not missing anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think one of my favorite ones, I posted about this a week or two ago, but the um, the Queen of Swords with the, um, the black cat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Um, that, you know, it, like, I, I, I look at the Rider Waite Smith deck and it, like, I, to me, the black cat is the Queen of Swords, like. Queen the, of Wands, right? Oh, Queen of Wands, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I I know my tarot cards. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I'm just nervous. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> um, that was actually one of my favorite uh, majors when I saw it. I was like, oh my god, the black cat from the right away. Yeah, like, I yeah. loved it so much. Um, but yeah, so that's interesting too because, um, like for me, with the right away Smith, like I struggle a lot with the right away mm -hmm. Smith. Um, and I love the symbolism and the archetypes that the Rider Waite Smith like brought to light. Um, and so I like using it kind of like as a frame of reference, but like for my tarot decks, like I'm changing a lot of the names like drastically. Um, the, the, the general setup is going to be the same, like just normal tarot setup with the minors and the majors and stuff, but I'm changing up a lot of the names and a lot of kind of the energies behind the cards. Because yeah. I feel like, just like with this deck, it's kind of like modernizing the... Yeah, I, I stuck pretty close to the traditional. And the reason I did that is that, you know, I'm I'm not a, a tarot expert. Like I, I was saying before mm -hmm. I, before we got cut off that I, you know, learned learned some something about tarot 20 years ago. And then it was, it was not really a major part of my life for a long time until I, I started back on this project. Um, and kind of dove back into it. So I, I feel like to reinterpret it or 
come up with my own spin on it. I, mm. I would really want to have a stronger understanding of it as a starting point. If if I ever draw a second deck, I'll probably take more more liberties with the, okay. the structure of it and the naming of different cards. But um, yeah, I, I for this one, I, I think I really just wanted to to take the the tarot archetypes that like the familiar ones and do my my spin on those archetypes rather than starting to like reinvent or rename them yeah and and it's and it's um it makes a lot of sense because um that way too uh the deck uh becomes a little bit more accessible to most mm -hmm. like beginners advanced people like intermediate people like anybody really i feel like anybody can use this deck and like Really, even if you don't know the right away Smith, like this deck and your little guidebook is like complete set. You don't need to have to know the right away Smith. Like I feel like the messages and the symbology is like real is strong enough to like hold its own, um, even separate from the right away Smith, even though it's kind of based on that. So, um, so talking about that a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about how the deck has evolved. Um, before launching the Kickstarter. Um, Cause a lot of people think that like decks are these like polished things that stay the same from the beginning to the end. And um, even, even I thought that too, but I know that you had a really interesting experience with the borders of the deck and they were very different before and they shifted into something new. And so I kind of want you to talk, give us a little bit about that experience and, and how that, um, like how decks evolve and like how to remain fluid and open. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think for me, a big, a big part of this project was, was not focusing on the end goal of having a deck and selling a deck and, and having a product, but just, just thinking about the, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this as a process to, you know, to grow as an artist and, and to learn about this, this region. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I didn't, um, like at, at the start of the project, I just kind of started drawing. Right. And I put mm. some thought and some energy into figuring out the template, figuring out the, like the style, although the style evolved over time and I had to go back and, and, you know, update a lot of the early cards. Um, but you know, as time goes on, like you work on something for months, you're going to have more ideas than you had in the first week. And, and I also got exposed to a lot of other tarot decks that were out there that mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't know about at the start and start, you know, you start seeing what other people are doing that, um, that works and that, and that's exciting. And that's maybe more, more visually interesting. So like my, my very first cards, and I think I finished the, um, all the majors and maybe I, I did all the majors first and then I started on the court cards and then I did the, um, the remaining minors at the end. And uh, I think I was maybe halfway through the court cards when it, when I just had an idea for like how, like a better border treatment that just kind of opened up the cards instead of containing everything within these like light gray borders that, that were maybe a little, a little older, a little more traditional. Um, and, you know, I had also been thinking that like, that that I needed to have a covered a covered border mm. within the card, so that you wouldn't be able to look at the edge and know which card it was, right? But right. you know, as I started learning learning more and seeing other decks, it's like, oh, well, I could just do an edge treatment, right? So I, like, I'm going to do matte painted edges on the on the cards, and then it it doesn't matter if they all have different borders. If you see the deck from the side, every card's still going to look the same, right? Um, so it's you know it's just learning and and growing and changing things as as you go. But um, yeah, I, I tried a few different border treatments, and you know I, at one point I I asked my Instagram followers what they liked. I was I, one of I them. Asked a, yeah, I asked a bunch of my designer coworkers what they thought, um, and and yeah, I wound up going with with like a full a full edge treatment where yeah here's yeah here's one where um, well, yeah, the sun is a great example because you can see like the the board. There's the border, but it's not really a border. It's, it's more like a just a treatment. The the image extends beyond it, and some elements are in front of it, some elements are behind it. Um, it just it felt like the 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 art really like came came forward when I when I did that. Like, um, 
yeah, I, I, I was so happy after I went back and updated them. It felt like all my, all my artwork just kind of leveled up. I I was, when you posted this on your Instagram and you were like, okay, y'all, I need you to pick one. Like when I saw this border, I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. I've never seen a deck like that before. And on top of that, it's exactly what you said. And especially this card when I was going through the unboxing or whatever, the reveal. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> not quite the unboxing, but when I was going through the reveal, um, this card really felt like, I really felt like that swan was about to fly out of this card, hmm. you know, and that effect I feel really only comes through for the most part in borderless decks mm -hmm. where you feel like the card is like popping out. But in a way, this is even more effective because like you said, um, some elements are behind it. Some elements are in front of it and it creates this like contrast. So it really feels like, um, it really feels like the images are popping out and coming out. And yeah. so I love, I really love that. Yeah. Or I, like I did the same thing down on this, on, on this little true man. I, I call this the, the placard, like that's my name for it in, in mm. the layers of every file. Um, so yeah, just having, having like elements from the drawing extend over it and then have a shadow mm -hmm. go, on, go onto that placard. It's, it's just a little bit of like a, a trompe l'oeil effect to, um, to pull you pull you into the image and, and connect the image to like the design elements around it exactly and i that's why like when i got the deck in my hands and i saw the the borders in person i was like wow like these borders really do work and i noticed that um now that you know this deck has come out i think i've seen a couple of other decks that they're, they're starting to kind of use this this like faux border like mm. style where it's like a border but it's not a border yeah, everything um, everything in art has been done before. I'm sure. I am sure that is not a new idea. I didn't, it may not I be a new idea, it. but I have not seen it in a tarot deck before. So, cool. um, so that's where it's like it adds this new le this like you said it adds this new level to the art that really kind of makes it pop. And um, I think that that's this the whole story about the border is just a really important lesson for most people. Um, on two levels of like just being flexible, right? Of like yeah. allowing things to evolve. But on the second level of how important it is to have like input, right? From people following you, from the mm -hmm. audience members, from coworkers, friends, family. Um, like, yes, it is a deck that maybe you're creating or we're creating, but also a big part of it comes from knowing like how it's going to be received by people. And I think by then, when you were asking these questions, I think you had already decided to uh, launch a Kickstarter for it or no? Yeah, I, I don't know at what point I decided to do it. I was definitely toying with the idea by then. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to remember exactly at yeah, what point it's I made not, that it's... decision, but it, it, was, um, it was definitely like on the table at that point, I would say. Yeah, um, and talking about that, your your Bren Marn Instagram page was that something that you started like, like because of this deck, or was that yeah, a page you had I, and you well, started? Right, I started it maybe a week or two before I started the deck when I when I was kind of digging back into art. Okay, um, and I, I intended for it to be an an art account, um, and you know posted it posted a few recent drawings that, that I had done, you can kind of see, if you look at the earliest posts, you can see, um, you know, kind of some, some drawings that were kind of exploring the style that became the style that I mm. used in the deck. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it would be more, more of an art account, but once, once the tarot project um, became the, the main thing I was working on, I, I guess it became more of a, more of a tarot, tarot account, but um, you know, it, at at some point when when this project is is out there and is not occupying all my all my free time anymore, I I, I have a lot of other art projects that I'd like to start doing, and I'll I'll share them on on this account in the future. And some of them will be tarot related, and some of them won't. And um, you know, that's that that's just what it'll be. So, um, yeah, it's it it wasn't started for for this project, but it's basically become the account for this project. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But also at the same time, 
it's it's a good thing in my opinion that it's not like the Pacific Northwest, like the handle isn't the PNW Tarot or something, I, um, because it allows about, you. Yeah, I thought about changing that so many times, <laughs> um, and and kind of wondered if, if maybe I should. Like that seems like the smart move from a marketing point of view, but um, you know I I I want I still think of it as an art account even if ninety percent of my followers are tarot people. <laughs> yeah, um, but you know that I I don't know if it'll always be a, a tarot only account. So well, um, that's I, why I didn't I, change it. I think that, in my opinion, what most people end up doing anyways is consolidating down to one account. Mm. Um, like for example, Kara from the uh, Prairie Majesty Oracle, mm -hmm. she had a personal page and she had the Prairie Majesty Oracle page. And so she was just having a really hard time and she just consolidated to the one. Um, and I think, um, and she also changed the name to something more like uh, generic. It represented her, um, her brand name instead of the tarot deck name. And so yeah. I think that a lot of people tend to kind of consolidate already. And so I think you're on the right track. And also I think that it's true that 90% of the people might be tarot people. Um, but at the same time, like we love art. So yeah. like, <laughs> so like if you post art, like, and it's not necessarily tarot related, I think it would be like super, you know, um, what's the word? Like, it's going to be relevant to us anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one thing that's really um, amazed me is just the, the positive response from the community to all, any of the, the art that I posted or the, the deck updates. Um, you know, I was, I was, as a little bit of an outsider coming in, I was like, not not sure how my deck would be received. And it's just been really overwhelming how, how positive everyone has been, so. That's really awesome. I'm not, I'm not worried about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, it kind of, it does kind of bring me into my next uh, topic of questions. And um, these are kind of questions that are like, uh, more specific towards like people who are making decks and like their experiences and stuff. Um, but yeah, one of the questions I had was kind of exactly that. Um, like, what were your expectations like coming into Kickstarter and like, how did Kickstarter like, like live up or meet those yeah. expectations or surpass? Like how does, cause like a lot of us are on that page, right? Where we're just like unsure of how it's gonna be received and like all this stuff. So yeah. like, how, how was that for you? Yeah, um, I was so, I was so nervous before the Kickstarter, right? It, it was really, um, it's it's pretty anxious, right? Because it's it's this thing that I've been working on for a year, and then that's the moment where um, where where it launches, and and you you know you put it out there, and it's like, okay, I like people people have liked my posts on Instagram, but does that translate right. into someone actually being willing right. to pay money for this thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I I will say with Kickstarter, it's it's an incredibly powerful tool. Um, and I, I would recommend using it as an indie deck creator, even if you don't necessarily need to, even if you have other sources of funding. I think um, the community is very used to going to Kickstarter. They understand, uh, understand what, what a Kickstarter is and why someone might be doing a Kickstarter. And there's a lot of excitement and build up around it that I think gives, gives some momentum. So like, you know, I, I could have just printed the deck from my savings and sold it on Etsy, right? And I'm sure people would have bought it, but I think by having it on Kickstarter, it makes it like an event that people right. feel like they want to be a part of. I want to be in on the first run of this thing. Um, it's also helped me figure out how many decks I want to print mm. um, because I, I thought I would get, I don't know, 200, 300 people. And how many um, are you at now? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's over a thousand. So, Look at that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, and <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. Um, and it's, it's amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think it's that, that people want to, want to be a part of the, like the first run, um, the first right. run of this thing. And, um, you know, Kickstarter, like if you, I, I was, I was really fortunate to get, um, the projects we love 
badge, which mm. I wasn't even aware of this until I started learning about Kickstarters and how to <laughs> yeah. do a Kickstarter, but they, they, they will promote and recommend certain certain projects that they stand behind and those will show mm. up in in the searches and when people are browsing projects um more more often um and i'm i still don't know how i got it or uh or what but i, I my my best guess is that it's because i had a really strong first day mm -hmm. and, and i totally owe that first day to all of the uh all of the people who i sent um my prototype decks out to yep who started sharing um sharing content about the pacific northwest tarot um you know a, a week or so a week and a half before the launch um and just getting people excited about it and it, it was amazing to me like seeing seeing this project that had been on a screen just i was the only person having anything to do with it for a year um suddenly you know print printed up as a as a prototype that <laughs> yeah that other people are making content with and taking <laughs> incredible photos that are way better than my photos and doing really insightful readings with it and doing flip, flip throughs and um, just talking about it and, and sharing all their ideas of what it mean, meant to them. Like it was, it was so, so overwhelming that first week. Um, and I, I think that really built, built up toward when, when the Kickstarter did go live, there were already a lot of people who, who, who had heard about it, who, who mm -hmm. were ready for it, who had, who had, um, you know, signed up to get a notification when it, when it went live. Um, yep. so I think that first day probably contributed to it, um, getting that badge on Kickstarter. And then, you know, from, from there, I think a lot of people have, have just discovered it in, in ways that like, if I, if I was just trying to totally do it do it on my own like pre-orders or something yeah or... yeah i i don't think it would have gotten the same exposure yeah and i i i i um i tend to agree especially for most people who don't have like ten thousand followers already on instagram and stuff yeah. and right. you know like and like you said even those people you'll see them doing kickstarters you know they don't do pre-orders um like I know Grounded by the Moon, he's done like three or four Kickstarters and he could probably do pre-orders by now, but because of the ecosystem and yeah. the benefit, like um, I was considering doing pre-orders or Kickstarter and stuff, but I think the more I've done these interviews, like everybody's like, you should do Kickstarter, you should do Kickstarter. Um, it's the best, like it's really helpful and there are fees, but I think and you know maybe you can tell me if you agree they the the fees they don't feel like they're steep they feel they feel appropriate for like the benefit you get yeah i mean it's, it seems reasonable from my point of view i mean we'll we'll see how i feel once once, <laughs> once the campaign ends uh, uh, that's true <laughs> yeah um yeah but, but cool shout out to to joseph at grounded by the moon he's one of the people i sent a uh, a prototype deck too and and he was really instrumental in getting it shared and you mentioned Kara as well she she's been one of my biggest yep. promoters and her her prairie mad uh majesty oracle like we we both have done decks that are connected to a region and connected mm -hmm. to, to natural life in that region so there's just such a good um pairing be between the two of them yes yes that's and it's really awesome to be able to like um, have these like prototypes printed out and share them with people and kind of you, you get to see like, it's almost like a test run, right? Of like how mm -hmm. it's going to be received by people, how people are going to react to using it and reading with it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I had no idea if it would work as a tarot deck. Right. You know? <laughs> like prior to, prior to printing this prototype, it was 78 image files on an iPad. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can't do a reading with that. So, um, <laughs> right you know it was it was as much like okay i need to see if this thing works like what um like do i need to do i need to change anything um like just and also just like what does it feel like to hold it in my hand right you know and flip through it um because it's a very different experience than seeing all seeing all those images on a screen yeah it, it totally is and um it kind of brings me a little bit to my next question i wanted to um we're getting close to the end here yeah, yeah. um but i wanted to ask uh like which one like uh if you can maybe one or two of your favorite cards that you that you illustrated and maybe yeah. one or two of your most challenging cards 
Absolutely. Um, okay, let me let me get there. There's the challenging. Yeah, one. no worries. Um, it's so hard to choose a favorite. Okay. All right. Here we go. Cool. All right. Some favorites in in no particular order. Um, the the high priestess. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I I love this lady. Um, yeah, it, just the um, I, I talked about this a lot on um, Holly and Esther's podcast, and just kind of the story behind why I picked this spider as the mm. as the high priestess. Um, but I also just love that image. I think I'm going to put it on the front of the box. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Um, the page of swords. I I just I some these birds are so cool looking with like the <laughs> with the devil horns and the yellow faces and uh, I I just think they look rad. So that's that's <laughs> actually been my my phone wallpaper for the last year or so since I drew it. Um, the the two of cups. I I mean I I was telling the story before we got cut off, um, but this card has a lot oh, yeah. of personal meaning to me. Um, this is kind of the the self insert card right here um so um i i also just love birds in general and and these um violet green swallows are just so so beautiful um the lovers just compositionally i i like how things you know really really flow together in this card um it's just it, and you know foxes are, are just such such beautiful creatures um so yeah when that when it, this was maybe the the third or fourth card I drew, and and that was oh, when wow. I was like, okay, I'm I'm onto something here. <laughs> yeah, that's when you knew you were like, okay, this is this is real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this feel, this feels like something I should be investing time in. <laughs> uh, and then death. This this uh, this was actually my favorite card um, for for a long time in the deck. And and you mentioned the older border treatment that I had. I think this one worked really well with the old older border mm. treatment for for some reason I, I think maybe the colors connected between the mushrooms and, and the border. yeah that makes sense so so i still like it a lot with the new with the new treatment too um but i i think there's a lot of other cards in the deck that have kind of risen up to to where to where that one is um and then some that i struggled with um the devil definitely definitely mm. a card i struggled with um i i just i couldn't decide what to draw like like mm -hmm. you know the um i the the typical stuff is, is like a snake or a goat right right and both of those would would work but um i i wanted to challenge myself to do something a little a little more unique um my 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 wife laura actually had the idea of using um an invasive species um mm. so the, these beetles are are not supposed to be in Oregon and mm. when they do show up in Oregon there's there's like a phone number you're supposed to call and they will like <laughs> come and eradicate these things oh wow they're, yeah they're all over the east coast um they're, they're called Japanese beetles and you know they came over at some point and they they just really destroy crops wow because um, they have no natural predators here um so yeah that that just felt like a good a good image for the devil but I really struggled with what that um imagery was going to be and then the, this guy this was this was the struggle the seven of cups the seven um, of cups <laughs> i i redrew this um this <laughs> this it's a damselfly not technically not a dragonfly but you can call it a dragonfly yeah um i i redrew it seven or eight times because i wow. you know, i had this idea for like okay the seven of cups you're underwater you're looking up and seeing like the surface world above like that's you know dreaming and and imagining um, and, um, just did not like knew that that would be a challenge and, and really push my artistic skills, but just could not get that water effect. Right. Um, mm, and, like the ripple. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ripples, I, like, it just wasn't looking right. Um, and at a certain point I said, like, you know what, it's fine. It's good enough. Like keep you know you're never don't be a perfectionist move on right. to the next thing and and you know but then in the back of my head like when i got to the end of the deck i still went i went back and i redrew it one more time <laughs> um so yeah this this one was really a challenge and i still don't think you know i i love i love the concept i but the um wait, i think it's one of my stronger concepts but the the artwork still 
you know, just okay in my view, but I'm yeah. still so proud of it because I, I, <laughs> I spent so much work to get it to the, to that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's really interesting because, um, it just kind of, I guess it, it shows this, uh, what we talked about earlier about just kind of being adaptable and like not trying to be so cemented into what something should be or look like. Yeah. Um, but also it reminded me of something that Carrie said, um, from the, when I interviewed her, she was like, oh, I already have. I'm changing this card and I'm doing this, like I'm, I'm changing things. Like I'm not even yep. worried about whether things are going to stay the same. Um, and so, yeah, I wonder how you feel about that. Do you feel like um, there's going to be like second edition with changes or how do mm. you? Yeah, it's too, it's too early for me to, to, for me to start thinking about second edition. And if I'm, <laughs> yeah. changing, I'm still changing things for the first edition. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, um, so, so we'll see. But, um, you know, maybe six months from now or a year from now, if I'm thinking about a second edition, I, I'm sure I'll have more ideas between now and then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but there's all there's also there's also a part of me that wants it to to be as it is that it that it captures this moment in time, mm -hmm. this, this year in my life that I was on lockdown and you know drawing as as an escape as an as a survival mechanism for my mental health and yep. um wait i to, to some extent i i want to i want to honor that and and not and not change it much but you know who knows who knows yeah exactly we'll see what happens um yeah. i want to share uh just two of my one of my favorite card two of my favorite cards that you have here yeah, um, and they're two major cards and it's the hanged one yeah. with the judgment card this blew my mind um when i was going through the deck i was like i feel like this this uh butterfly is are probably the same as the hanged one yeah. um and this isn't a connection that's typically made in the rider Waite smith and so i thought it was really interesting that you kind of paired these two cards together a little bit and um so yeah um i think I want to say obviously it was intentional, but um, like, how did you decide to say I'm going to connect the hanged one to judgment? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so it um, it was really important to me that this project evolve organically. Like, I'm a I'm a designer in my in my day job. So, mm -hmm. and when I'm working on a design project, it doesn't always evolve organically, right? You want to I. I plan things out from the start. I learn as much information as I can, and I come up with, with a plan, and then I execute on that plan. This was a personal project that I was doing, you know, for very different reasons. Mm -hmm. And I deliberately did not want to take that approach. So, mm. um, you know, when I drew the hanged one, I, I had no idea what my judgment card was going to be. Right. Um, and, um, it was it was only as I as I was, you know, learning learning more about about each card and, and really starting to think deeply about each card that that, that idea of judgment as as a moment of awakening, um, mm -hmm. that that resonated for me with the with the image of of a butterfly, um, and you know you th you think about. Um, like the way metamorphosis works, like we, we really don't understand it, but um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the caterpillar dies. Like it is right. not, it does not just kind of like stretch out and grow some wings and now it's a butterfly. Yeah. Like it liquefies, it's dead. Like there, it's whatever it's neural pathways were <laughs> in its brain no longer exist. It, it's, mm. it's, it's goop, right? It's, it's the insect equivalent of stem cells that can mm -hmm. then become anything um mm. or or you know become any part of a of a butterfly and and then it, it rebuilds it's it's literally reborn as a yes. new a new animal it is not that caterpillar anymore it is right. it is a new creature um and yeah so that um you know just just like having chosen the the chrysalis for for the hanged one um, like that, that just felt like a really powerful connection of, of like waiting and waiting. And then it's like, okay, the, the moment is here, right? Like, um, that, like this chrysalis is sometimes it takes two weeks for that transformation to happen. Sometimes if the, if the conditions are, are 
too cold or, um, you know, I, I think it's mostly temperature based. I'm not an expert on butterflies. <laughs> yeah, but I think so too. Yeah, they can, they can go into stasis and it, and it can last years, right? But mm -hmm. it's, it's like waiting for that moment to, to emerge, um, re reborn. And, and so that's, that's where that connection came from. Yeah, I love that so much. And uh, the judgment card in my deck, I'm, sh I'm actually renaming Awakening. Oh, wow. um, because that's what that's what I believe is the true essence of that archetype is this um, is this awakening into this new reality, this new lifestyle. Um, and I think that that <clears throat> the metaphor between the metamorphosis and the liquefaction of the caterpillar and specifically the the concept that the caterpillar is gone and done and now it's something completely new um, is not something I don't think a lot of us internalize when we think of a butterfly you know yeah. it's i think a lot of us are just like oh it's a bigger um it's just a bigger caterpillar like i feel yeah. like i think there's a movie i think isn't it bug's life where it's the caterpillar and then he just he gets into his cocoon and then he comes out <laughs> and it's the same caterpillar but yeah. with just little well, wings on it yeah i mean i've i've got two young kids so we we i have read hungry hungry caterpillar many times and, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, the very hungry caterpillar. I, I, at one point, I had it memorized. Um, and, <laughs> you know, the, the, the butterfly at the end of that looks just like the caterpillar, but with, right. you know, amazing tissue paper wings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that it's, um, it's a perfect, um, it's also like an education point, right? Like, we're like, oh, wow, that's yeah. something I didn't know. But it has a strong symbologism and a strong significance for the card itself. Um, okay, cool. So, um, uh, I think I would like to move, yeah, I'd like to move now into just the last couple of questions. Um, I wanted to ask about um, what designing the box was like. You said you, um, you're thinking of picking. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll find out because I haven't designed the box yet. Oh, okay. Because um, that's something I'm curious about. Because yeah. I don't, that seems to be difficult and I don't know how. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you've done design work before. Um, I So... You know, I, I definitely know what to expect because I, okay. I've kind of been through this with professional mm. projects before. Um, I think the hard part for me with designing the box was deciding what kind of box to do because there's so many options. Mm. And I've, I've done a lot of print work before, but I haven't done a lot of packaging work. Yeah, makes sense. So, yeah, I've, I've gotten samples from five different printers at this point of all different mm. types of boxes and had them send me photos and stuff. And... Um, you know, I think the best advice I could give is like find a box that you like and, uh, you know, from, from another deck and, and do something similar, maybe tweak it here or there to, to, to match what you want to do. Um, but, but beyond that, a lot of it is technical, just like understanding how the different panels in your print layout will mm. apply to the box. And then, um, you know, knowing what information needs to needs to go on that box for retail purposes, like does it need a, a barcode and an ISBN? Mm. Like if it's going to be shrink wrapped and on a shelf somewhere, you probably want to put some images of cards on the back of it, you know, maybe some, yeah. some explanation of what the deck is all about because some, you know, if it's ever on a store shelf, people might be buying it without being able to open it. So Right. Um, yeah, exactly. So there's, there's just a lot of uh, m more technical considerations and not yeah. so much like artistic and like, yeah, I'm thinking a little bit artistically about like, what is that experience of opening it? Right? Like, mm -hmm. um, okay, I, like, the, I, I think the spacious tarot does this really well, where you open it, and there's that little panel that's like, this space is mm -hmm. for you. And it's like, that's such a nice little surprise. Yes, to open the box. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking about like, it, it, you know what um what what goes in in that space i i'm, I'm doing a, a flip a flip lid with like a magnetic closure so like oh what, yes yes those are the you... best boxes yeah i'm, I'm glad you think so because i i <laughs> agonized over it um but, but like you know what's there on that inner panel or like you lift the deck out and what's what's under the deck right is there mm -hmm. something there or is it just blank um so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely thinking a lot about that stuff. I've, I've sketched it, but um, you know, I, I haven't done the final design yet. So it's a work in progress and we'll be seeing it on your Instagram, I'm sure at some point when yeah, you're closer. Yeah, as soon as it's ready, yep. <laughs>
Awesome. Yeah, I, okay. I definitely have plenty to do with that. And um, the, <laughs> yeah. the, guide, the guidebook is written, but still needs some fine tuning on the typography and, and right. the title page. Um, and and the, the, the cloth, I, I, I have not drawn the, the reading cloth yet, which several people have asked me. So um, <laughs> I, I will do it. I will do it before the campaign ends. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think um, uh, sometimes people do get a little impatient. Oh, um, no, no, yeah, no, no but... one's been rude or impatient. I think people just want it, they want to see it before they yeah, decide yeah. whether or not they plunk down cash for it, which is totally reasonable. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I, already, yeah. I already signed up for it because I'm like, I know I'm going to want it, so I'm just going to do it right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I get that some people do want to see it and stuff before deciding. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, I think we're, um, we're, I've asked you a bunch of questions. Um, I've got a lot of really good, awesome information. This deck is amazing. Um, I wanted to say or ask you like, so what's, what's next? Like, how can we support you? Like, yes, the Kickstarter is coming up, uh, or, you know, finishing up now on the 8th of July. Um, so yeah, just like, how can we help support you? What can we do? Like, where can we find you and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, great questions. I mean, the, the Kickstarter is really the, the push right now. So um, you can find the, the link in my bio on, on Instagram. Or um, if you go to www.pnwtarot.com, that'll redirect you to the Kickstarter. So uh, mm. if you're watching this later on YouTube, that's, that's a good way to find it. Um, I just set up that redirect today. So <laughs> um, for it's acting a little strange you need the www if you don't enter the www it's still going to my personal website um, oh. but you know whatever if you <laughs> if you just google pacific northwest tarot you'll find the kickstarter right um, and yeah in terms in terms of supporting me um you know i i i always love seeing um reactions to the deck or right now i i would love to hear about any organizations that are um focused on environmental stewardship um, in the Northwest that, that might be um, good organizations to, to um, you know, donate some of this money to, to, to make a difference. Um, and yeah, you can, you can follow my account on Instagram. It's bren.marn, B-R-E-N dot M-A-R-N. Um, and yeah, I, I really don't have anything else to share. I, I mean, I, I can't wait until this deck starts to get out there into more people's hands um, because it's, it's been so fulfilling to me to see how other people are using it and the, and the readings and content that other people are creating with it. So, um, you know, if, if you back the campaign or if you buy it down the road, um, I'm going to open an Etsy, Etsy shop. Um, then yeah, I, I would I would love to see what what you create with it. So you know, feel free to tag me. Feel free to, to let me know what you're doing. That's awesome. And you know, I was gonna. That's actually what I was gonna ask you is if there was like if the Kickstarter like you're gonna have enough copies to have sales and stuff after the Kickstarter yes. launches. Yeah, yeah, I am. And um, so so the UK made a made a very tough to understand decision on um uh that that just makes it very hard for small sellers to to operate there there's a lot of logistics involved in their in their mm. import taxes right now um so i i i can't sell the the kickstarter deck to the uk so if you're in the uk i'll i'll have that etsy shop up as soon as possible and make sure you get first dibs oh so if you're pricing. in the uk they can't back the deck yeah they can't uh well so it's it's complicated, but okay. essentially, yeah, essentially they can't back the deck. Um, but you know the the plan, even even aside from that, like that that's that's my motivation to get that Etsy shop up there as soon as possible. Mm. So that I know I've got some folks in the U in the UK who who want to back the deck and currently. Okay. Um, but even even beyond that, I, I'll I'll have plenty of copies of it after the Kickstarter and plan plan to just keep keep them on etsy and and um yeah that, that'll be the plan and i'm you know there's there's a few stores that have backed it at the at the wholesale level as well so i know it'll be available in in at least a handful of of tarot shops and and other boutiques that's really cool so so y'all heard if you are wanting to back this deck 
Um, the Kickstarter is live. Um, if you, for some reason, can't back it right now, he will have some copies. Um, this is a really beautiful animal-based deck. Um, and I think that it's appropriate for anybody who wants to read tarot, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate. Um, it'll just help you connect with the archetypes in a different way. Um, and I want to end this live um, asking you, uh, Brendan, if there was any last piece of advice that you have for those who want to make a deck. Yeah, what a what a great question. Um, I I think it's it's really to view it as a process and not an end goal. If if I had started this off saying I'm going to draw a a full tarot deck. I don't, I don't know that I would ever have, have finished. Um, mm. it, 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 it's daunting, right? It, um, you know, it's, yes. hun it's hundreds of hours of work, um, that, you know, at least for me, I, I was doing it in my free time and I imagine most first time deck creators would be as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think what got me through it was that, was that it started off as, um, you know, that like, this is something that, that is enriching me and, and that I'm, you know, if, if I had stopped after five cards, that would have been okay. If I had stopped after the majors, that, that would have been okay. Um, mm. I, I think it, you know, it was maybe halfway through that I was like, you know what, I'm really going to do this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, but even then I, I always tried to be careful to, to make sure that I was staying, staying focused on the process and not the outcome. Um, so so yeah I, th I think that and and let and to let it evolve organically um you know you don't have to have all the answers and the whole plan on day one because you're going to learn so much during the time that you're creating it awesome well thank you that's such great advice brendan um i this has been such an amazing conversation i think it's safe to say that uh we're both pretty excited for this Kickstarter and really looking forward to uh, the end here of the um, the end of the campaign. Somebody was asking here, are you excited about the campaign ending yeah, is soon? Yeah, is that Logan? Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's blown past any expectation I could possibly have had. I, I think I said earlier, I was expecting maybe 300 people would buy this thing and it's, it's over a thousand now. So, um, you know, now, now the pressure is on to deliver. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. I've got this. Um, yeah. We trust in you, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it, um, it's, it's so, it's so exciting. There's, there's about a week left to go. Um, and, yeah, and then, and then I'm I'm already working on the production and and going back and forth with the printer to finalize the proofs and and all of that. So it is it is in full swing. Yes, and I can't imagine what it's like. I mean, I bet it feels pretty surreal to like be like remember where you were like yeah. a year ago and like see where you are now. You're like what? <laughs> yeah, I'm def um, I'm definitely doing a lot of things I never thought I would be doing. Like. <laughs> Like doing an interview on Instagram Live, for example. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I really appreciate you. I think you've said that like you've never really done an interview before or anything like that. Yeah, no, I, no, I mean not not before this. Like I, I'm typically more of a behind the scenes kind of kind of person. Um, so yeah, I I did um, the Wildly Tarot podcast a couple weeks ago, and and I'm here talking to you now. So this is definitely like stretching me to do things that, that, I'm, <laughs> that I'm not used to, but, but I'm having fun. So yeah, good, good. And that's what the tarot is about, right? About expanding our horizons, mm -hmm. finding new experiences and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, I've had such a lovely time here with you, Brendan. Um, this is such a great deck. I'm really, I'm so excited to see the final product and like, see how it evolves and change even from this version. Um, and yeah, um, just everybody who's watching, please make sure to continue to follow Brendan. If you can, please back his Kickstarter, share it, and um, stay tuned for the rest of his projects and his creative endeavors. Thank you yeah. again, Brendan. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on and, and best of luck to you with, with your deck. I, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, whenever you're ready to, to share what you're making.
Thank you so much. I, take, I mean, take your time with it. That's, I guess that's my other advice is, is mm. it can, it can feel if you've got, I mean, not that, it, not that I have a huge following or anything, but it can feel, it can feel like a pressure to, to like get something out or, or let that out, but get out there. But, but I think when you talk to people, no one, no one really wants to be putting that pressure on anyone. So. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Don't, don't, don't rush it. Don't feel like you have to share something before you're ready to but when you are I'm, I'm looking forward to it thank you so much brendan that means a lot and i'm really excited to um i guess you know working together in the future yeah great thanks again awesome well thanks again have a good day everybody and thanks for joining bye bye